continue on. I'm sorry. Um, just trying to get you to the hear a um, a uh, tax attorney telling stories about um, how, in retrospect, he um, can explain away a, from a fr what I consider to be a major fraudulent um, activity by the FTB. Um, the, uh, he himself today said that um, the, uh, um, the correspondence um, by Phillips to the California addresses um, tapered off uh, significantly or however he said it after um, April 3rd. I would hope this board would um, not only make note of their um, what I consider to be an intentional error in order to, as the auditor um, uh, is, um, um, as it's established that the auditor said, she's out to get me, quote, unquote, and that that was what they called a um, vendetta, vendetta attitude of audits, auditors. Um, so I would hope that your board will, um, in addition to um, hearing my, the, um, my um, uh, sourcing discussion relative to the um, income that came in during the 1992 disputed period, will also um, will um, disregard and deny um, taxes on the post-disputed period. Um, the uh, income, which is the $24 million era. I also would like to say that they never audited, they never protested, they never even admitted or acknowledged or thought about the post-disputed period. They cut everything off at April 3rd, um, the end of the disputed period, and now that they were forced to transfer the $24 million era into the post-disputed period, we have the epitome of a, of a false tax assessment where they are assessing taxes on income that they never um, addressed during the audits or the protests and not for the, um, all, um, all of the briefings in the, um, before the, your, the board. Um, it was first brought up and this money was first um, taxed, if I could put it that way, um, in the um, uh, in the post-disputed period, in the additional briefing that was um, um, approximately 2014 or there, uh, 2013 or so, and now they're uh, trying to um, uh, cure their error. Um, explain their error away so they can still tax me on what the uh, what the F, what the um, um, the uh, record shows that um, was resi it was residency income in January 1992 um, in um, <clears throat> during the disputed period it was not sourcing income um, in the um, post-disputed period in 1992, which I would repeat, they never did an audit, never did a protest, never argued those issues, and now they're assessing me taxes on, and penalties incidentally, which your board uh, graciously um, disposed of. They're, tax, they're um, assessing me um, uh, taxes and um, and fraud penalties on um, on income that they never, never, never addressed um, in the um, in the whole twenty in twenty years, almost twenty years of that process, and that is very unfair. And I submit, I I, I expect it's very much illegal, and I suspect the board will not um, condone such treatment. Madam Chair. What I would like to do is to spend a little time rebutting the other income for the uh, disputed, the, the income for the, the comments um, that were made relative to the disputed, the 92 disputed period. 
Uh, yeah, let me let me go to Member Runner. He wants to get something in here. I'm not sure what. But yeah, let me just uh, again. I, I I think I think we're hearing a lot of the same stuff over and over again, quite frankly. And I think we'd like to get to the questions that we have um, to clarify. And maybe as we ask those questions, you can bring out the points to which you are still needing to talk about. Um, because I don't want to lose the, the issues that are out before us as we keep kind of going down the path. So, uh, you know, I don't want to cut you off in your rebuttal, but I, I just. Yes, Your Honor. May I be permitted to go through the high points that um, of their misrepresentations in my rebuttal? Um, and I will cut, uh, try and cut out a lot of these things that aren't um, as important. Please go ahead. Okay. Thank I, will, you. I will try and do this quickly. Um, I think that it's disingenuous for them to keep saying that I told the um, recipients of, that I could be contacted through the California addresses. I didn't. I used, um, in a lot of these respects, old um, um, form letters and such with headings on them, and I never said I could be contacted there. They were just old um, return addresses in those uh, documents. These people all knew I had moved to Las Vegas. I had notified them to that effect. Relative to the bill by Gregory Roth, um, pretty sure, and it's pretty Schroeder, Schroeder Law Firm was doing additional work on, um, on um, what was called um, re-examinations. Um, they um, originally billed me for them. Phillips eventually, um, shortly, I uh, took over responsibility and they built uh, Phillips for it. But these were not for licensing activities. These were for patent office re-examination activities. The letter to Toshiba, and there was a letter to Oki, I believe. Um, Phillips needed that to um, tell them that they had um, uh, <clears throat> exclusive licensing authority. Phillips um, <coughs> uh, created those letters. Um, when they said they needed my letterhead stationery, they meant the ones that they had. I didn't have any letterhead stationery like that. That was something Phillips created, and I signed it at their suggestion. So that they could, and they did it in later years, license Toshiba and, they, um, and that other company. I don't think this is right, though. Um, relative to the California account that they keep talking about, or California accounts, these were investment accounts. These were not bank accounts. Investment accounts have a, um, my, had my Nevada situs. And what happened is I was, um, yeah, I paid, I wrote drafts um, on these, a few drafts, not many, and I, um, I, I was emptying those accounts in favor of the other ones, not because I had any concern for them being California um, uh, contacts, but because my investment um, uh, advisor could not um, work with those um, uh, investment accounts, and he wanted me to put them in the other ones that he had here, um, Fidelity, Benham, um, Federated, and the like. So those were not California banking arrangements. Those were emptying the California accounts because my investment advisor wasn't, didn't like them. The press release, the press, one thing the, the, um, <clears throat> the uh, um, uh, that was brought up in this um, um, <clears throat> as being um, California contact. No, absolutely not. Um, that February press release expressly said, um, uh, Mr. Hyatt um, uh, resides in Las Vegas. Um, it's very interesting that you were not told that. That's very important information. And I think that holding back important information like that is just as bad as uh, making false statements. Um, there's a comment that Phillips uh, quarterly reports had, um, 
uh, with 80 million income, uh, reciting 80 million income from the fourth quarter of 1991. Well, first of all, Phillips had to generate quarterly reports for me. That was part of their responsibility as the um, licensing entity, and I was the um, inventor. But what happened there is, again, they um, misaddressed that report, and I believe what happened, that uh, quarterly report, and I believe what happened, if you look at the file, and I'd have to verify this, that they um, replaced it with a, a second quarterly report for that period um, with my um, correct address in there, my correct Nevada address. FedEx says, they said, signed by G.H., by Gil Hyatt. There's a lot of evidence in the record that says that that is false. Um, first of all, um, we have the FedEx um, testimony that uh, under in an, affi in a, a, in a, um, affidavit that says that the um, that the um, putting a name in that signed box does not mean that it is actually signed by the person who is in there. That was the person who was addressed to, and in a particular case which we briefed very well. Um, here's a FedEx um, uh, the, uh, um, statement that they say um, shows that I was present at Jennifer Circle when in fact it says um, Miss Smith. Uh, I forget her first name, but it's got her name in the signed box. Well, she worked for Phillips in New York. She was not at Jennifer Circle to receive a um, FedEx package that was addressed to me. She was not. Elise Smith was her name, Elise Smith. And this had been well briefed, but the, um, and the FTB knows it very, very well um, that these uh, signed boxes in the FedEx um, uh, uh, deliveries were not, did not mean that they were actually signed by the individual um, that they typed in there. If the, um, it was, usually the person it was addressed to. Relative to the Denver to Las Vegas business trip, it's interesting that they should mention that. that in the briefings, they called that a ski trip. And we said, that's ridiculous. I didn't go to Denver and go on a ski trip um, within a couple of weeks of getting out of major uh, hospital for major cancer surgery. I did not. I did not. Um, there is a um, a document that indicates a Denver uh, to Los, uh, LAX um, um, flight, but I did not um, go to Denver um, while I was recovering on a ski trip, which they claimed, when I was recovering from cancer surgery. 12-hour meeting with Mr. Roth. Mr. Roth uh, filed in his declaration, um, said no. 12 hours was... Um, uh, the amount of time he spent that day and billed Phillips for, it is not, um, and he gave a list of things he did, it is not 12 hours for a meeting with Mr. Hyatt. The meeting with Mr. Uh, Hyatt. I think we understand that those meetings are not with you. They're on the golf course. There are a variety of activities included in that with, with, the, uh, with the company. So I think we're okay on that. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, signed the Hitachi Agreement. Yes, Phillips uh, wanted me to sign the uh, Hitachi Agreement. It has my California address on it, um, and um, it um, uh, and I remember a specific discussion where Hitachi did not want to um, negotiate with Phillips because they had a cross license with them. So Phillips got. Um, Pretty Schroeder, the law firm with Greg Roth, and they got um, Mar Leonard to do the negotiation so that um, Hitachi would be more comfortable with that. Um, relative to the different different payments, what happened is Hitachi did something very different. Um, Hitachi, in addition to saying they didn't, they would prefer not to um, negotiate with Phillips, they also said they wanted a license on all of my. Um, patents, because Phillips only had 23 of my patents, in, um, and uh, the 24th one, which um, I threw in. Um, so um, um, Hitachi agreed to pay a small um, amount of extra um, for um, the rest of my patents, so, which I threw in in order to um, 
um, because Phillips wanted to close that agreement. Uh, yes, the Hitachi agreement has my P.O. box in Las Vegas as the in the preamble. Um, so anyway, there's nothing suspicious about um, Hitachi paying extra money for more of my uh, for license for more of my patents than Phillips had a right to license them, and I threw them in in order to help. Um, uh, Phillips closed the deal. Oh, okay, I'm going to bring this back to questions from the board uh, because I think I think everybody's got a lot of information, and we're we're um, I think you know with minus a few little questions, we we kind of know where we are. Mm -hmm. Member yeah, Runner, thank you. Um, yeah, just a couple quick questions. Um, I, I am confused a bit in regards to what is the amount the income that was the NOA was based on. Um, maybe go to appeals. What is the amount that the NOA was based on? Uh, yes. So the NOA amount was calculated, excuse me, uh, was calculated based on the numbers uh, submitted by appellant in 1996 in that Cohen chart, right? It approximates uh, $51 million. Okay. And that's from the approximately 48.7 million that FTB read the chart as uh, being received on January 15th, which was not received on January 15th. Okay. And adding to that the 2.9 million that FTB read the chart as being received on February 3rd, but was not in fact received on February 3rd. Okay. So that was the amount in, in, in the NOA? Correct. Okay. Let me go to, to, to real quick to, to FTB then. I'm confused in regards to what you right now are arguing is the amount. Same thing that the protest office hearing the 51 officer million? Got. The, that, yes. Okay. Yes. The $51 million of income. Yes. Okay. And may I explain? If it's more, or, I mean, you can explain, I guess, if it's, if it needs explanation. I'll leave it. Okay. <laughs> because, I, again, that what's confusing me is I show an income that it seems to me I'm going totaling here in regards to what's shown here is like $84 million. So, okay, now I need to explain it. Thank you. Okay. What the protest hearing officer did was find that the entire $84 million reported on Mr. Hyatt's 1040 for 1992 was California sourced. Right. Income. Okay. Okay and basically said, by virtue of the fact that taking all of the, deeming all of this California sourced income cures the $24 million error because it's more than what the auditor had concluded at the $48 million figure, but because we can't go beyond the original assessment we're sustaining the original assessment. Okay, so you, again, just so I'm, I'm clear here, so what you have identified, what you're saying is that you're dealing with the, with the $51 million issue, even though based upon a calculation of California, if you go with the argument of California source income, it would be approximately $84 million. Correct. But because that was not in the NOA, that, not, that amount, what's being argued right now is just the tax that's due on the on, uh, on the 51 million. Correct. Correct. Yes. Okay. I just want to clarify that at that point. So we're basically just basically using the amount, I guess, that's based upon your residency argument. It, no, yes, it's the same number. Okay, it's the same number. Okay, well, that's what I kind of wanted to work through. I, yes. Um, you know, at that point, because again, the thing that are, that was interesting to me. And, and then I guess it makes sense because we don't have to really discuss then the payments that were received by the taxpayer from from um, from April fourth because right now he was you are not assessing him for those for those payments correct for after April fourth well that that's not entirely correct okay well help me help me get correct then. <laughs> what, what, what I'm <laughs> help me get correct. essentially what we're saying 
is particularly in light of the determination that there's no residency right that the 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 tax assessment that went out assuming residency was based upon a, a 48 million dollar uh, or 51 million dollars yeah. of income yeah okay. what we're saying is the 24 million dollars or so that was released in, on January 14th the payments that came in in late December, the $4 million in Oki, and the Hitachi, when combined, are sufficient. If, if, you, if, you, if you look at it all as California-sourced income, it is more than sufficient to sustain the number that was originally based upon the residency conclusion. Okay, I guess the point that I'm wanting to get through here and understand is that you are not increasing okay. Absolutely. The amount. No, not at all. Based upon the argument of residency. Or sourcing. I mean, excuse me, on, on sourcing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> is that when I understand that correctly? Yes, we, I think Which we finally again, got I, there. I assume that is why then in your, in your documentation here that you provided, you basically end your, 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 your documentation here with March. Because you this, were basically making the well, residency I, argument, not the sourcing argument. Well, quite frankly, Mr. Runner, I ran out of time. The, the, the presentation was originally going to be a different. You have, a, you, you have charts like for the, for the rest of the year with you? I, I stopped there, but I had, I had additional. I, I cut it out of the presentation. You have the charts time. here with the, for the rest of the year? No. No, I, I, what I oh, said okay. is I, in preparation, in preparation I ran out of time and I, there, because there were additional instances uh, of continued California contacts beyond March, but to get it done, we got okay. it done. Okay, let me ask then one last question back to, um, to appeals, and that is, and I think this is the same question that we actually had that, that Mr. Leonard brought up in the last discussion. I just want to see if this is the case, if in this particular case, did the NOA that was issued in 1992 also include the issue of sourcing? Yes. Okay, thank you. Member Mark. Okay, so I see that uh, the taxpayer or Reardon and McKenzie submitted this document that allocates all of the payments in 1992 by date. And what the Franchise Tax Board did in their letter dated April 1st, 1996, is they basically just used those numbers on page 16. Schedule C income, Phillips was the 48.7, Oki was the 2.9 million, and the Hadachi was the 32 million 900. And you just use the exact, they tie, you know, exactly, $84,671.280. Um, and 62 cents. Correct. Right. Yes. But, but if, as, as your letter says, since we determined that Mr. Hyatt is domiciled in and a resident of California until April 3rd, 1992, the income received prior to April 3rd, 1992 is taxable to California. So why wouldn't you break out just the amounts that, since he's a cash basis taxpayer, just the amounts that he received, namely, the $4 million from Oki on April 3rd. Phillips, he received one, two, three, four, five payments on January 15th, January 14th, and February 12th, totaling $23,900,000. Therefore, if you add up all of the income he received prior to April 3rd, 1992, which is when we say he became um, uh, a, a Nevada resident, therefore, the business situs has changed since he no longer is, um, you know, he's now moved to Nevada, moved everything to Nevada. Why wouldn't the taxable amount be $27,919,326? Well, the letter didn't itemize what came in from Phillips when. I get it, but you use the same amount. Correct. So you pulled off the amounts just pulled off the sums for those three, aggregate, Hitachi, Oki, and Phillips, even though it's, it's wrong because there's payments out. So the aggregate amount is actually a net amount and not a gross amount. Um, but the auditor just pulled those out 
and just put it in your letter and your schedule, even though it's wrong, it's off. Madam Chair, can yes. I take a shot at that? All right, go ahead. <laughs> I, I think we're conflating sourcing and residency. Um, exactly. Because, um, I mean, when I look at the sourcing issue for 92, the April 3rd date to me is irrelevant if the business practice stayed the same in 92. So you still had a business situs in California, and there's nothing that demonstrates that any business facilities were set up in Nevada. I mean, the whole practice stayed the same. This, this looks exactly the same as what we got for 91 in terms of lawyers involved and communications to locations in California. And so, um, I, 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 I mean, the way I kind of look at it is that residency is totally separate and apart uh, if, in fact, there wasn't any change in the business practice of where now the business is totally operating in Nevada. And I don't think he even took out a business license in Nevada until the end of 1992. Didn't have a business. So in other words, you know, there still was licensing, um, licensing business just continued. I mean, just continued as it happened. But I don't think the residency should affect that because um, the business side has remained the same. But then it should really be the 84 million plus, you know, these um, payments out on that chart. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? I, I mean, it should be another. Correct. Yeah. That, I mean, but that, yeah. 96, it should be like 96 million. But that's in excess of the NPA. Yeah. No, I, you yeah. can't go, you can't exceed. And we couldn't exceed the NPA because they changed their argument. Oh. I, I have a, I have an issue here. I you know the NOA is through four two of ninety two, so I don't think you can <coughs> add to it um, after that. And I do believe the clear sourcing rule should apply. Uh, income flowing from intangible source, which this is, because there were the last time the big dis debate up here. The reason we split was because he was signing, faxing, getting stuff back. Uh, this time we're dealing with. Uh, the domicile of its owner and business size exception should not apply. Uh, the FTB admits for purposes of sourcing that Hyatt was a Nevada resident after October of 1991. Oh, no, okay. The income resulting from his intellectual property patents after he moved to Nevada is taxable in Nevada, not in California. Um, it's not like a contract. It's not like it's not like a, a contract, a, a, an installment contract, it, uh, because the installment contract that he would have signed, would the income would have been guaranteed a promise to pay. In this case, there were no guarantees. In fact, we heard that Phillips had told him that he probably wouldn't be getting income for a long, long time. The fact that it started coming in does not change the fact that the contract that he had that was not an installment contract. So it can't be related to that. It can't be compared with that. These were licensing agreements that were supposed to mature a lot later or were supposed to start uh, come to fruition later that happened to come in to, uh, happen to get, start being paid upon early. Um, and if the FTB, we, we already decided that residency, he, he established residency in 1991. I know there was a, a, a dissent to that, but 1991, October of 1991. The fact that he considered, he continued to receive royalties does not mean that that's California sourced income because these are not installment contracts. These are, you know, uh, uh, licensing agreements. I do not agree that he had a business or even had to establish a business in Nevada, business license or business, because he was actually, um, he's an inventor. He was not in the business of licensing. He contracted that out. Uh, the fact that he had to sign for things is, is apparent and obvious, but he's not in the business of doing that. Um, and that's why he contracted it out. So I, I don't, I, I cannot understand how all these numbers come in after the NOA. I know what we're trying to do is to say, or what, what the FTB is, is uh, trying to do is say that anything that happened on any of these contracts would be California sourced. 
but I don't think we can go there with this because this is not an installment contract. And in fact, he, we, we have to find that he moved. Even the FTB stated that as of, uh, what, uh, April, no, March, March, as of the end of March, he, he, was, he was then a Nevada resident. So I just don't think we can keep doing this. This is like adding uh, insult to injury here. And so I would like us to at least establish a firm cutoff um, and then not keep saying that it's California sourced income because it's, it's it, Cali intangible source is taxable in the domicile of its owner. And that's what this was. This was not a business operation. You may have uh, defined it as such in 91, but it's not a business operation in 92 when he relocated and um, he did not, he was not in the business of licensing his patents. Thank you. Is there anyone else? A real quick question. Yeah, yes. question. Oh, oh. Real, this will be really quick. When, do, we, do we know when it is that you, that you, somebody made mention of a Nevada business license? Uh, yes. When did you take out a business, Nevada business um, license? I believe it was uh, near the end of 1992 when Mr. Kern thought that I should do one just for appearance's sake. I never really used it. I didn't need a business license, but um, on the advice of my CPA, I took it out. Was it, was it, uh, I have a payment from, from Phillips here at 12-29-1992. Did you receive that payment? After you opened up a California business or a Nevada business license, probably my best guess is that I got the business license in November '92. Is that correct, or thereabouts? Okay, um, that's kind of interesting to me in regards to. I mean, again, I, 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 I don't think any of the sourcing belongs. In, in there, but it is interesting to me that indeed he actually, for at least part of it, he had a he had a Nevada business license, which would it's and I, well maybe I can go back to what what other activity in December do we find that he was doing that indicated to FTB that he was doing business in California? Hang on a second. Primarily just the disbursement of the monies. Okay, what does that mean? The um, disbursing of monies. Just checks. Checks that what went to you? Well, there him? are, oh, let's see, on the, on the 21st, uh -huh. there's a uh, negotiation session with Clarion in Southern California. Uh, on the, uh, well, the 20, 22nd, Kenwood signs its agreement. Uh, on the signed agreement was uh, was signed in California. Um, I honestly don't know where it was signed, sir. Do we? Well, if he had I, business, I would assume he Kenwood's had a business license Ken, in Kenwood's, Nevada and he signed it in Nevada, that sounds sounds like a Calif Nevada Kenwood, business. Kenwood's in Japan, and okay. Mr. Hyatt didn't sign the Kenwood uh, contract. Okay. That okay. Would have been okay. Phillips. Okay. Um, we on the. On the 27th, we see Mr. Hyatt approving uh, a, a, legal, a legal bill f on behalf of Mr. Roth. Um, do we know where he was when he, signed, when he approved that? Do not know. So if he had a Nevada business license and he approved that in Nevada, why would that be California source income? Because uh, it's a continuation and a consummation of activities in California. That, the, these contracts were consummated in California, particularly Hitachi. So again, let me just see that. So. So I guess the argument, maybe I'm missing it, but the argument is since, be, since anything that was, I guess the argument that we're making right now then is that any, any income that came from contracts that were signed, well, again, we don't even know if they were signed in California, right? Correct. So, so again, why? What's consummated? Yeah, what's consummated mean? Well, the, the, con yeah, the contracts were the result of Mr. Roth's riot. Uh, I'm particularly focusing, focusing on Hitachi. It was the result of all of Mr. Roth's effort, efforts 
and, and all of that came out of California, the development and the so nurturing of that contract. Why couldn't, you mean he couldn't be a businessman doing business in Nevada, have an attorney in California? If, if, that, if that's all there is to it, but all of the, the negotiations, the workup, the whining, the dining, all of that's going on in California. It's not just simply a retention of a lawyer in California. It's the, it's the work to get the contract in and, to, and, most importantly, to bring the money in. So, again, so the argument that's being made, just so I get clear, is because there was negotiations, because there was a contract signed somewhere, but there were meetings in California, that there's nothing that, I guess, the taxpayer could have done that would move his business to Nevada. Sure, you could have done it all somewhere else other than California. Mm -hmm. Well, no, wonder if he wonder if he moved halfway through. There's no, my point would be there's nothing he could have done under that scenario to move his business to Nevada. Other than to up the business and the way then the manner in which it is being facilitated so that the California contact and the California situs associated with that business is severed. Well, how do you sever past tense items that were you, you know, that, so you have a business and you, and part of your business, you, you, you started your business, I'm going to make the business side of this argument for a moment. If you have your business and you're making, doing your business in California, you're having meetings and you're doing all those things and, 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 and then all of a sudden you move your business license and do business in Nevada because you had meetings in California. There's nothing you could do to escape the California tax for the for the prior activity for the prior that, for, for the, the for the that it, that is is that is beyond the stage of just beginning and starting something new. Taking out a business license in Nevada is certainly an indication of an intent to sever the business relationship from California and right. to start anew and to start doing something. But if what we're talking about but is any, so any revenues or any income that came in prior to that new business, you would assume that any business, any, the only thing that would count would be income that came in, new income that would come in with new contracts, new, anything that was a, that was a, a, a related to the existing contracts could never be Nevada income. Not under these circumstances where everything to get them in play and get them to a point where they're an account receivable is done in California. Well, were they account receivables or were they? By the, by, by the, uh, by August, the, all that's left to it with Hitachi is to wait for the payment. So these were accounts receivable. You knew what the amounts were that were going to be coming in on those dates? No, sir. Um, may I comment? There's a misinformation being presented here. First of all, um, Mr. Roth was not my attorney. He was working for um, the pretty Schroeder law firm that was engaged by Phillips. Phillips specifically engaged him and um, and Mar Leonard to negotiate with Hitachi because um, Phillips because Hitachi did, and Phillips did not want to work together for appearances purposes. So um, and, uh, both Mar Leonard and, um, Phil, and um, Pretty Schroeder billed um, Phillips for that work and um, Phillips paid directly to them. They were not my attorneys. They were engaged by and um, paid by Phillips. In addition, um, the, um, even though some work went on in um, California between um, Mr. Roth, Ms. Uh, Mar Leonard, and Hitachi, um, I was not involved in that. I didn't get involved until Phillips wanted me to sign the Hitachi agreement because of that appearance aspect, and that was done in Texas. Um, they went to a, um, a special, um, a really nice place. They um, and uh, they had a signing, and I was I was part of that. So it was even though there's a lot of talk about California, it's misinformation because um, where Phillips' attorneys negotiated the Hitachi license um, is not on my head, and um, I did not go to California to sign that agreement. I went to Texas, and I did so as a courtesy to Phillips. Okay, I, I just fear that there's such an aggressive attempt here to find to find what California source income is, when especially when there's issue of contracts are engaged, 
and the contract revenues or the as a result of contract revenue and money money income is, is coming even though somebody has a business other state is just a slippery slope for aggressive tax collection for people who actually are choosing to choose to move their business out of California. Because uh, I don't know where you draw that line based upon the logic that was just given. Thank you. Yeah. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, first, I'd like to, um, just for a point of clarification, ask the pill a question uh, relative to the MPA and the increase of the uh, assessment uh, subsequent to the issuance mm -hmm. of the NPA and does that also pertain to uh, the assess the assessments related to uh, the items in question uh, so in this case there are several different contracts that a dollar value was assigned to does the, that dollar value have to stay consistent as well or can we just take the aggregate total and say, okay, it's the 54 uh, million is there, but it's made up of whole different factors? Um, <clears throat> you are limited to the amount in the NOA. I think you're free to look at other evidence, even if it's after uh, April 3rd. Mm -hmm. However, it might be a shift in the burden of proof. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, that's kind of where I was going. Question of the appellant. Um, I just feel compelled to ask this question, and you really don't have to answer it. I just want to ask, uh, is there a strategy in the representatives not um, speaking, not talking, helping to guide this discussion? I mean, what, I, mean what are you I would. Here for? <laughs> I want to uh, provide some questions that kind of guides this, but at the same time, I, I don't necessarily want to. Um, um, I don't want to um, lead anyone in any one direction. That's not necessarily my role up here, but anyway, since you don't have to answer it, um, let me move on. Um, your, your, your Honor, I'm, I'm an open book for you. Please ask what you will. No, I'll leave it alone. Uh, is there any, um, on the sourcing issue, uh, business situs issue, um, is there any contemporaneous evidence that uh, negotiations took place, subsequent negotiations, negotiations uh, subsequent to the activity that occurred in 1991 that took place uh, outside of California. And uh, let me qualify that by saying that I view taxation as a double-edged sword. And so if the sword was to cut the other way, where you had, um, where you had activities, uh, golfing activities in Texas somewhere, uh, but you had uh, a business site is in California, a physical business site in California, that in and of itself wouldn't be sufficient. So I don't know if we can totally rely on that, but anyway. Your Honor, um, too much was made about Hitachi, um, not because it's so important, but because they want to make a lot out of it. Um, what happened is uh, Mr. Roth was given um, and uh, uh, the opportunity. Can, can you include dates uh, in months and years in your discussions as well? Uh, um, the Atachi was um, uh, the negotiations. I think took place started in the uh, first quarter the um, of '92, uh, continued into the second quarter by um, not by me, but by. Um, uh, Pretty Schroeder and Mar Leonard, and I think um, I was asked to sign the agreement in Texas um, after 
um, after the first half of 1992. But other than Hitachi, all of the others were, um, and there's a lot of evidence of that, were um, negotiated um, outside of California and to a very large degree outside of California, um, outside of the U.S. For example, these four licenses, the, excuse me, uh, the microphone, the four licenses and the $24 million era thing, uh, that was Phillips traveling to, um, to Japan to negotiate them, and then um, they, um, uh, they signed the agreements without any um, assistance from me and, um, and then collected the money in uh, New York. So that, those were negotiated outside of California and outside of the U.S. Relative to Sharp, um, <clears throat> NEC, and, um, and Sony, um, which um, were um, signed in December 91, and um, I received my share in January 92. Um, those were negotiated by Mar Leonard in Japan. Um, the um, Japanese companies usually didn't come to the U.S. to negotiate like they did with Hitachi, and, um, and Mar Leonard traveled to um, Japan regularly to um, uh, negotiate with those Japanese companies. Usually they had s um, uh, at least several meetings um, lined up with different companies for efficiency and with several um, licensing um, uh, clients. Um, Philips wasn't the only one. Did that answer your question, Your Honor, or yeah, did it, I? It, it does. Let me go to the department. Um, uh, I get the department's, I, I don't get it. I shouldn't do that. Um, original um, argument was one of residents and sourcing coincide. Um, wherever the residence is, that's the sourcing. Um, the Appellant has testified that negotiations took place outside of California on these other deals. You have any contemporaneous evidence to refute that? I don't. Well, there's there's very little there very little on the, those those other contracts. I I'd share it with you if I had it. I I, I know the contracts were there. Uh, what what that what happened with them? I honestly. There's, there's, not, there's not the volume of documentation pertaining to them as there is some of these other deals. What's the basis for picking them up? The, that they are an adjunct of the California business situs that existed in 1991. It is still Phillips performing work on behalf of Mr. Hyatt and Mr. Hyatt's licensing business that is headquartered in California and a continuation of the master plan that has been developed and implemented throughout all of this. True, but it appears to be a condition subsequent to that activity, that that condition subsequent is totally unpredictable as to what could have happened. Uh, and it could not have happened at all, um, that the activity germane to that as you said earlier, the earning of the funds, that activity appears to be subsequent and conditional. So how do you tie the two together? I, and, 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 I'm not certain I understand what you mean by well, conditional. Well, let's say in 1991, hypothetically, no, I don't, in 1991, could you have predicted these other transactions based on the activity that occurred in 1991? No. Your Honor, may I? Member, no, no. Uh, well, I think, uh, I sir, think we're please. Good. Mr. Hyde. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, there, there's a blatant misrepresentation about no evidence. Absolutely not. That's what um, I've been accused of all along, destroying evidence, concealing evidence, no evidence at all. What happens is there's a significant amount of evidence that Phillips was traveling the world and, uh, to negotiate um, licenses on my patents. For example, Phillips was obligated to send me quarterly um, reports, and these quarterly- Where did they send these reports? 
Um, they, well, they initially were sending it to my um, former, um, to my um, Cerritos P.O. box, and they, um, in 92, they shifted over and started sending them to um, um, my Nevada addresses, but there still was a little bit of waffling. Well, instance, why, why did they send you those reports? It's just to update you or? No, this was a contractual obligation, and I required it because I couldn't, um, I, I needed to know um, how much money they were getting in and how much they were deducting for expenses and things of that nature. And, and what would happen if you didn't agree with uh, the activity? Um, I, I really appreciated what Phillips was doing, and I would have been very, very careful about um, challenging them, even if there was a mistake, but I never found a mistake in all the five years that they were sending me those reports. But, Your Honor, if I might make the point, the, um, they traveled the world over, and they accrued expenses, and they had all of these licensing experts, um, typically Team A from New York and Team B from uh, um, Eindhoven, from um, uh, the Netherlands, and they had in these expense reports that were attached to the quarterly statements um, the name of the expert the, um, and the details of all of his expenses that they were deducting from the, um, the income. So there's a tremendous amount of really solid information on these, uh, in, on these um, worldwide travel and negotiations. What role did the California lawyer play in those transactions? Uh, n none at all as far as the um, uh, quarterly statements were concerned. Oh, no, I take that back. Um, the pretty, pretty Schroeder um, and um, Mar Leonard um, um, uh, charges, all of the charges, all of the expenses that Phillips deducted, um, including um, Pretty Schroeder in California and Mar Leonard in Texas, um, um, were included in those quarterly reports. Who, who had these meetings in California um, that the FTB um, delineated. Well, um, <clears throat> there. And, think, and what was the purpose of those meetings? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, th I uh, the interference was a major issue, and um, um, Pretty Schroeder was um, taking the lead in the interference proceeding, and I was the inventor. And um, uh, we had witness, and the interference proceeding can, was. Can you elaborate on the interference? Yes, Your Honor. I had a patent, um, a very important patent, and uh, Texas Instruments um, uh, invoked a um, proceeding called an interference, which said that they have a patent that they copied. Essentially, they copied my patent claims, uh, which what, is okay. What did the in interference, to some degree, I'm asking leading questions, but to, to what degree did the interference, to what degree did the interference uh, activity um, have to do with the income generated? Um, very little. Some would say that uh, the interference interfered with it because um, the companies were not sure if that patent would survive or not. Um, the flip side is if it didn't survive, then the license they, pay, they took would have had less value. But if it did survive, it would have enormous value. So it was a balancing for the um, licensees. But the, um, th that was one of 23, uh, 23 patents, and the others were important patents also. Okay. The, but the interference was a patent office proceeding, and um, it, uh, um, it had witnesses. Um, and uh, expert witnesses and the like. It was almost like a litigation. And I was the inventor and the primary witness on that, even though it really wasn't involved in the licensing. Phillips took over the responsibility for it because I needed that help, and they were generously took that over. Question of FTB. Um, the activity that occurred in California, any of it related to negotiating the um, the um, transactions that occurred subsequent to, to January 1992? Oh, yes. 
uh, as I went on at length, all of the Hitachi, all, all of the whining and dining, the golf course, the meetings at the Four Seasons. And who was, was Philip in, involved no. in that? No, that's, it was all in California. It's primarily Mr. Roth. Mr. The Mr. Ross Billings indicates sometimes Mr. Hyatt is there. I can't. I'm not going to tell you he was there all the time, but there are billings and pass-through expenses like meals and whatnot that show that Mr. Hyatt was at some of it. But all of that is done in California. And the while all of this is going on, you mentioned the interference action. The interference was a claim against the 516 patent. This business took off with the 516 patent, and the, you know, w without it, I'm not sure, based upon the documents and reviewing, that this ever would have gotten off and taken off the way it did. Mr. Roth well, is the... wouldn't the interference speak to the value and not necessarily the transaction, the negotiation? Well, if the, if you, if you, the, let's, the, my point is that that, the 516 is the microprocessor patent. Got it. And without it, there's the possibility, of, based upon my review of the documents, there's a very real possibility that this business licensing business would have never gotten off the ground. Mr. Roth is the lead in protecting that very important business asset, and all of that is happening in California throughout all of this, including throughout 1992. Mr. Hyatt. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, that is absolutely wrong. Here you have a tax attorney making up some stories about um, patent licensing and patent prosecution and things like that that he apparently either knows nothing about or is misrepresenting it. What happened is the 516 patent, the licenses you know, did deal with um, 20, 23 uh, patents, but it also they always include, Your Honor, they always include continuations and divisionals um, uh, and continuations in part of these parent applications. And in that interim that the um, 516 patent was being interfered with, if I could call it that, other patents were issuing that were included in the license agreement by, um, by that um, uh, provision that con, uh, continuing applications are also included. So um, here were much, much more important patents that were issuing to me that these uh, licensees were getting licenses on. For example, I'll just take a moment to your time. The, fi the issue in the 516 patent was on a single chip um, uh, computer. A single chip is a, um, in some cases, a one dollar item. Can, can uh, you but my, make sure you tie your testimony to the to the transactions in question? Okay. M may I comment on that? Uh, um, that sure. May I make one point? But Very the continuing applications were on systems. For instance, I got a, um, a, a, ver a really great patent um, with a lot of claims in it that covered the personal computer patents. But so was that related to the to the Hitachi or the? Texas transaction or the other one? To all of them, Your Honor, because it was a continuation of it, and it was uh, added by reference to the list of 23 patents. And I would much rather get a 1% running royalty on a um, on a thousand dollar personal computer than a 1% ro running royalty on a one dollar single chip. So the, um, the portfolio was gaining value as time went on rather than losing value because of the interference on the 516 patent. Okay. So you've testified as to what uh, uh, Phillips' activity was and, and where some of those transactions were ne negotiated. Um, did you have any involvement in those transactions while in... Yeah. in did you have any involvement in those transactions? Uh, not in the transactions themselves, but um, Phillips asked me to do things. Um, some things I voluntarily did. Uh, they certainly asked me to sign some. Um, so what was the purpose of meeting with the lawyer in Los Angeles? Oh, um, they, there were two, uh, that, uh, two different purposes. Um, one was the interference proceeding, and the other, uh, um, and other meetings had to do with the, um, uh, the licensing because I was the inventor and I needed to give them some um, information on that. He's an inventor. 
Thank you, Madam Chair, uh, for now. Member Mock, you have one more question. I okay, uh, yes. So, um, who's uh, Mr. Hyatt, whose address is 6600 West Charleston, Suite 118, Las Vegas, Nevada? I believe that was uh, Mr. Kern, my um, Nevada CPA. Okay, so you list him as your business address on your Schedule C. Yes, I had an office at his place um, in the, during the disputed period when I engaged him, he offered to um, let me uh, use an office at his facility and I used that for meetings and such. I used his conference rooms for meetings um, and, um, and some of his facilities. Well, yes, he was okay. very generous. Mark, what was the date on that? Huh? The date? This is a 1992 return. Oh, Schedule C. So, um, so I, I guess uh, to the Franchise Tax Board, um, if we are using the, uh, the address for the California homes, the faxes, um, all the professionals for 1991, which I agree with, I said, you know, I don't believe he entirely severed his residence, therefore he was still a California resident in 1991 and he's still doing business. But then in 1992, if we all agree that he moved as of April 3rd, 1992, and his business, which he is a Schedule C sole proprietor, would presumably follow him. He doesn't have any sort of office. He's not in the home anymore. He's moved, and he's in renting space out of his CPA. And even your calendars show, um, you know, based on your calendars of where he was, obviously, you know, September, October, November, December, lots of blue, meaning he's in California. January, February, March, 1992, lots of blue, he's in California. And then in April, 1992, he's hardly in California. So wouldn't that show, if he's a sole proprietor, Schedule C, that his business would have moved on April 3rd, um, and therefore he would be allocated income um, for California sources before he moved. And I understand, you know, Betty, I, I, I was, uh, Ms. Yee, I'm, I'm also kind of working all through that, you know, in 1991, if I don't think he moved to Nevada, then he still did business in California. And I understand that this is all continuing business, right? So what you're saying is 1992 is all continuing business uh, contracts for as 1991, nothing has changed. But if he is a sole proprietor and we are talking about business licenses, when he opens a business, he files as a sole proprietor on his Schedule C, he moved, everyone seems to agree that he moved as of April 3rd, 1992. Why wouldn't we be allocating that income? To Nevada? Yes, since he has because business there's, there's now a, in, in There's nothing Nevada. to show that the business activity in California has ceased. The, the, the patents, the patent licensing that is coming out of it has, has developed in California. The, the situs is there. That is where the work is being done. It continues throughout 1992. All of the work with Hitachi is being done in California. Mr. Roth is ramrodding this. The whining, the dining, the golf exercise, the data reviews, the data research, all of this is being done in California. The defense of the 516 patent is all being done through California. There is nothing to show that that business has up and relocated to Nevada, even though Mr. Hyatt may be there himself. The business activity is being maintained. The business pursuit is continuing to be pursued in California. The Hitachi money is coming in through California. It's being dispersed through California. It's the same activity that was going on during 1991, even though he, is, he may have physically moved to Nevada in, 19, in 1992. Okay, Mr. Hyatt. 
I, I would just would let, let me just let me just respond a little bit to some of this. I you know because you have an attorney in Los Angeles that is actually contracted through a uh, through what Phillips uh, does not mean that he is conducting business in Los Angeles. Um, and the fact that he goes in periodically for a meeting to explain something, to sign something, does not mean he's got a, he's got a business in. In California his business was inventing and I can't say this clear enough he was inventor and he licensed patents um, but he didn't do it he contracted that out he, it was not a contract of sale it was a clear royalty payment if you establish that he had all this stuff coming in to California you know I mean I I think we've got declarations showing that they were they were mailing it to the wrong place or sending it to the wrong place. And I understand the 1991 will still be uh, billed because that is that is our determination that he had a residence in 1991 in California. But for 1992, there's clearly uh, a, a very strong case that he was not operating a business. He was not, he had a, he was accepting royalties. These contracts were negotiated out of state. Um, and I, I don't, I don't really understand how we can keep going back over the same data and ask this gentleman to keep explaining the same data over and over again. A at some point, we have to make a decision here as to what, what we believe happened. Is it believable? that he had a business in California when he was living in Nevada? Is it believable that the FTB determines that all income that comes in from anything that ever was begun in California now is California sourced? If that's the case, then what about 93, 94, 95, 96, whatever came in after that? I, I just think we've got to have a cutoff point somewhere, and I think that the, uh, you know, adding like I said, it's adding insult to injury to have this increase to, you know, just because the payments came in or the contracts were signed. He claims the contracts were signed in New York um, and that he did travel around. He's an inventor. He's not negotiating stuff on his own. He's hiring somebody to do that for him. Um, you know, I, I don't mean that he's not involved. He's probably a very much a hands-on guy. It's a lot of money, but I just really don't understand how we can keep beating this up. To follow, um, so did Mr. Hyatt receive money from these same contracts in 93, 94, 95, 96, 97? I mean, how, how long do these payments come? Um, Your Honor, there was a whole string of additional um, licenses that uh, Phillips negotiated with many other companies um, until 1995 when the um, auditor sent out letters to my Japanese, uh, to the Japanese licensees, and, and then um, they said, Mr. Hyatt's in trouble and stopped taking licenses. Um, the, the, um, so um, it, it did continue, they did continue past 92, the um, Phillips licensing activities. Um, Phillips didn't use Mar Leonard. They did it all themselves. They did a lot of traveling um, of the world. They um, negotiated not in, only in Japan, but they have um, negotiators in Taiwan and in Korea, although we, they didn't close any licenses with them. It was a worldwide organization that they had. And, and so the Franchise Tax Board, did you issue any letters for 93 or 94 saying? No. Why? The only, the two years in question were 1991 and 1992. Mm -hmm. That was it. So then 93, presumably he didn't, he filed the non-resident, didn't, didn't file anything. Didn't file anything. So why wouldn't it be the same logic? Well, that's what I'm saying. That it's a continuation of the prior 1991, 92, 93, 94. Like why, why didn't you? I don't think it's, uh, those years aren't properly before us. Right, well, I, I understand, that's a residency argument, so that's why we're, so they stopped. we're, so they we're stopped. talking about residency, they got into, they got but then now you're saying the sourcing is different than the residency and therefore it continues. <clears throat> yeah. That's but then in 93, 94, 95, presumably you accepted that he was no longer a California resident, did not do business in California, 
he didn't file a California tax return. Presumably, I don't know. Um, you never issued letters, so I don't know. It's, uh, I I wasn't yeah. around in 1993. All I know is 91 and 92 are the years in controversy. Uh, nothing happened with 93. I am why or why not? I don't know. I I am. Um, I'm ready to make a motion. I'm I'm ready to make a motion as well. <laughs> I get this rolling. <laughs> I, uh, what are you ready to make? A motion? <laughs> uh, because I think I think we're just. This is this is not good. Anyway, good. Um, okay. I, I I would like to make a motion to grant for the taxpayer on the situs. Uh, I believe he was a Nevada. It was uh, the business was uh, had a situs in Nevada. If it was a business for the year 1990. For the year 1992. Second. Now, based on previous rules, does that mean we can't ask any more questions? <laughs> yeah, you should not be going back and forth at this point. There's a motion and there's a second. Do you object to it or do you uh, want to talk among the board about it? Mm -hmm. yeah, I want to check only because I got some other questions. <laughs> <laughs> Member Horton. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm just trying to get to the I am truth. trying to get to it, I'm too, not, and I, that, the truth keeps growing. Have we, uh, let me ask just a basic question here. Have we actually closed the public hearing as a result of a motion? It, when you do a motion, yes. Uh, well, let me ask. Yeah. I, I know let me ask Chief ask Counsel. Yes. Is that yes, correct? That is correct. Okay, thank you. So uh, would you like to, uh, are you going to continue to ask a question of the FTB? Well, I could ask, since we're going by the rules, a point of clarification that would supersede the motion. Is that correct? We'll post it to appeals. You can you can ask a point of clarification, but you can't. You're not supposed to direct it to the parties. It would yeah, I know. I can else. direct it. To do you want me to appeal. withdraw? Do you have a real important question? You well, uh, you're not. Can you not clear after all we've heard? <laughs> no, you guys keep asking questions. To, in my opinion, not necessarily on point. Okay. But well, um, which confuses it. But the um, uh, Phillips activity, uh, uh, Mr. Hyatt. Uh, I mean, okay. If we're going back, I'll withdraw my motion. Oh, the second you. be withdrawn. We'll reopen the public yeah. hearing. Is thank that okay with right. everybody? Thank you. No. Thank you. Okay. No. <laughs> There's oh, okay. an objection. She just wanted. <laughs> well, she didn't make the motion. Um. Okay. I. Okay. Is it okay? Okay. I'm. I'll. I'll withdraw. I. I this is going to be a vote. So I will withdraw my motion. Is there a second for me to withdraw my motion? Well, you don't need a second. You don't need a second. Well, I mean, if I withdraw my motion. And, I, and the second and, agrees. And the second agrees. Okay, then we have reopened the public hearing uh, for a question. Uh, Mr. Hyde, um, if we are measuring business activity based on the preponderance of the evidence, uh, one would argue that we'd have to give some sort of weight to each activity. And so the question that I get to ask is, you know, and, and let me qualify this, I, I do find you to be a credible witness. I mean, it's just amazing your recollection of all this stuff, but I guess after 26 years, that's what happens. Um, what percentage of the, uh, what percentage of the activity that resulted in the uh, creation of the revenue uh, was performed by Phillips? Um, Your Honor, um, relative to the licensing, 100%, in my opinion, 100% was performed by Phillips. I was the inventor, um, and Phillips had um, exclusive um, licensing authority, and the um, involvement I had was as an inventor and a licensee to Phillips to keep informed, to help them out, and to... Um, um, restructure my life in Las Vegas. 
and while residing in Las Vegas, did you need to travel to LA or California in order to uh, facilitate any of the activities that's been alleged? Um, I needed to travel to Las uh, to California to do various things. I think there was a flight to um, San Francisco um, and a. Uh, and tell a me what you drives. did when you went to San Francisco and then when you went to uh, LA and Thank then when you, you went to pick up the information at the Cerritos P.O. Box and so forth. Thank you for your interest. I really appreciate that. Um, the Sony people were in the, um, in San Francisco for their own business. Um, Phillips asked me to meet with them because they wanted to meet with the inventor, and I um, took a flight in the morning, um, met with Phillips and um, and the um, uh, Sony people, and then I flew back. I think it was on the same day, but I'm not sure. They may have uh, put me up in a hotel. All right, thank you. But I met with them as an inventor, not to negotiate. In fact, if I might uh, continue, Your Honor, um, just for a moment, um, I was advised by the licensing people, do not talk about licensing to them. They want to talk with you as an inventor, and we um, need to do the licensing ourselves. I was told not to get into those subjects. Thank you very much. All right, thank you for indulging me, members. Sure. Okay, should I throw my motion out again? <laughs> I know I have one objection. I'll make a motion to find for the taxpayer that the, uh, for 1992, that the CITUS was in Nevada, business CITUS, be there one was in Nevada. Second. Yeah, members, I don't know if it was in Nevada, but certainly, I don't know if it was in Nevada, but certainly there's a lot of activities occurring outside of California and uh, the foundation that was established for this revenue that occurred in California in 1991 is not dispositive relative to subsequent transactions. I don't know how we can hold that just because this occurred, the negotiations were gonna take place. Uh -huh. uh, mem maybe some other members got okay? some, you know, yeah, member Yee? Um, I mean, I'm not, <laughs> apologies, Madam Chair, no, but I just wanna hear from my colleagues. Madam Chair. Yes, yes. So, um, I feel like we're playing that game where you're trying to put a pin on something you keep <laughs> saying that uh, it is, um, I mean, it seems to me the question here is really between 1991 and 1992, did the manner in which the patents generated income change? And to me, residency, this is not, sourcing and residency are two different things in my mind. We, we establish residency. I agree. But the sourcing really has to do with whether the licensing activity and the negotiations, just how the revenue, how the income was generated changed. And from the chronology of events that was provided for the first three months of 1992, it seems to me it's a continuation of the same type of activity. The varying degrees might be in question, but similar type activity, similar players involved, um, which suggests to me that there was not a sever of the business situs in California, and that the same process continued into 1992 in terms of the manner in which these patents generated income. You still had some involvement. You insisted on quarterly reports. Um, none of that. I don't think anything in terms of your role, Mr. Hyatt, changed between 1991 and 1992. Um, maybe in terms of the degree that you know some of the, whether it be Phillips or anybody else, um, you know, may have changed. But there wasn't a business site that's established in Nevada. Residency doesn't mean he established a business site in Nevada. But the way that the income was generated from the patents remained the same. And I guess my question to appeals is, is that the appropriate way to look at it? Hmm. Uh, no, well, I, I, I don't want to opine on whether it was the same, but I think uh, if, you're, if the board makes a different business side as finding for 92, for all of 92, then I, I would think implicit in that judgment was that there was a change in the activities in 92 as compared to 91. Okay. And uh, well, all I'm observing is that the 
nature of the activities were similar between the two years. And that didn't, and there was no indication that the business side has been severed in California as a result of how the income was generated from the patents between the two years. Well, well in 1991, I mean, there was participation in the negotiation, signing of contracts that occurred, meetings with the lawyers to kind of look specifically at the contracts in and of themselves. Subsequent to that, the testimony is, is that Phillips uh, negotiated uh, all of these agreements. Uh, in fact, the appellant flew out of state to actually sign it. Uh, no signing, uh, no evidence uh, of any signing of a contract in California. Or Nevada. Or Nevada, but uh, that make uh, there is evidence that he flew out. <laughs> to, um, and, and at that point, <coughs> much like in many transactions, the initial steps of the transactions are very <coughs> activity intense. And then once you establish a relationship, which appears to be the case, Phillips appears to have just taken over and began to do all these negotiations as they were contracted to do. So unless the department, which they've, they can have submitted some evidence to uh, contradict that, uh, which they have not. In fact, they indicated that they have no evidence to contradict any negotiations that took place in California. Uh, the preponderance of the activity was handled by Phillips and um, maybe Hitachi, I'm going to go back and take a look at Hitachi, and maybe Hitachi itself was kind of consummated prior to uh, 1992, and the subsequent receipt of the fundings from Hitachi would, would have flowed <clears throat> irrespective of any activity. Um, I do see a change. You do. Member Brenner? Yeah, I, th I think the change that I would point out would be, I think that was pointed out in regards to it was an identified business location in 1992. Um, that was, that would make that a little different, that makes that a different fact. Yeah, but that occurred in, in, in December. In, but to Member no, Ma's... No, uh, no, no, that was his business license. The, our, the, yeah. the, 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 the issue of his tax return that was for 1992, which would be all of oh, yeah. 1992 identified um, a Nevada business location. So to me, that's a pretty specific issue that is factually different um, in, in that regard. So you know, to me, if we're looking for things that are different, that certainly would be on the list of things that are different from 1992 to 1991. Mm. All right. OK. Um, is there any? Objection, Member Ma, are we ready to vote? Mm -hmm. Please call the roll. I, I mean, if I would ask that you amend your motion to say, to uh, indicate that. Um, the sourcing was that in the sourcing Nevada. occurred uh, outside, of outside, of outside of California. Outside of California. The, the, yeah, that's better than establishing the, citus yep. because I really that, don't have, I don't want to. Okay, that so the I'll. The preponderance of the evidence indicates that the, uh, I mean, <gasps> The evidence indicates that the preponderance of the activity relative to sourcing and from a business perspective occurred outside of California. Okay, I will thus so amend my motion. C Let me repeat the other it that the uh, preponderance of evidence uh, suggests to me or, imp or displays that uh, the sourcing for 1992 was outside of California. And I'll second that. Okay, so that is the motion. We have one objection. Objection. Would you like to call the roll? Yes, Chairwoman Harkey. Aye. Mr. Renner? Aye. Mr. Horton? Aye. Ms. Ma? No. Ms. Yee? No. Motion carries. 3 2. Okay. Your sourcing for 92 what? is not in California. I think so. So all of 92 is. Finished? Is that right? Yes, I think those are all the issues because if it's not sourced, there's no interest. Is that correct? I believe so. Okay. Then I think we are finished.
Thank you. This was a lot of work. I really appreciate all the attention, and I appreciate you allowing me to curtail the conversation a little bit. Um, we all had a lot of information. Both sides presented a ton of documentation. So I do appreciate it, and thank you very much. Yes, sir. Your Honor, I really appreciate the interest and um, the help that your bo the board has given. Thank you so much. After all of this 26 years or more, um, it's finally over with. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you so much. And go out and, I don't know, play some golf or something? <laughs> Seems like you've been living and breathing this for 26 years. See if you know what else to do. What are you going to do with your spare time? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, anyway, I don't know about you. When I get when I get through with the project, I've got a void. Don't know what to do. Um, I would like to uh, ask the board. I think we do have somebody. Do we have someone here that we need to do a closed session for? Just because we have a San Francisco attorney here. Yes, and he needs to speak to us. I was trying to get it to put off, but he's traveled from San Francisco. So we probably need to hear him, and then we'll report out after closed session, and then we'll adjourn, and we'll take up everything else tomorrow or the, on Wednesday. Okay. Members will now go into closed session to discuss the okay. litigation.
part two of closed session will be continued on Thursday. Thank you. Okay. And that concludes our business for today. Thank you. Thank you.